with any word problem is not talking when the teacher's talking. And then the next step is to go ahead and plot the information so we can get a visual idea of what is going on. Um, so we have a boat traveling due south. So again, I kind of know we have a bearing here. Okay. So I'm going to say boat, or B is for a boat, right? And that is at 40, traveling at 40 knots. Now again, knots is nautical miles per hour, oh, right? Um, so it is a rate, but we don't know how far the boat has been going or like traveling, you know? So we don't have a distance, like a length. So we're going to use the 40 knots as our magnitude, okay? Because we don't have any kind of direction. So that's going to be traveling at 40 knots, and that's going directly due south. Um, then we have a bearing of north 20 degrees west. So north 20 degrees west. So that's going to be a bearing like this. And that is flowing at 10 knots. And that is going to be our current. So let's use C. Now, in the previous chapter, we created a picture and created a triangle because that's what the last, or that's what the last quiz was on, like trig, and, trig triangles, law signs, law cosines. Well, here, guys, we have vectors, right? So we're not, we don't need to create a triangle, um, or at least, at least we could. It depends on the type of question. But in this case, we got to see what is our actual question asking us. So it's asking us is find the actual speed and direction of the boat. So now let's just like let's just make sense of this. You're going due south in a boat. Okay. You have current that is going in the opposite direction of you. It's also pushing you away, correct? So unless you correct unless you correct measure, you're going to be going slower than you initially intend to and you're going to be going off off chart, right? Don't you guys agree? Okay. So basically what we want to do is without you know, calculating this, let's represent a vector for each, for each um, let's represent a vector for, uh, for each component, our vectors that we have. So the first one is our boat. Okay? Now our boat is going directly due south. So to put that in angle form that we could type into our calculator, we don't want to use vectors, right? We want to use, uh, we want to use a, or I'm sorry, we don't want to use bearings, we want to use an angle in standard form. Correct? So you could use either 270 or you could use negative 90. It's the same angle. And then what is the magnitude of that boat? 40. So I could write 40 times the cosine of negative 90 degrees, the sine of negative 90 degrees. Because that's how fast the boat is traveling. Okay. And then let's go ahead and figure out the current. Well, the current is flowing at 10 knots. And now it's going at an angle of 20 bearings. Should I just do cosine of 20, sine of 20? Yeah. No. Got to follow standard form. Your, your calculator doesn't understand this as bearings. Your calculator understands this angle. So right? Close. Well, okay. 20 is from here to here. So you're doing 90 plus 20, which would be 110. OK. Now, so we have the boat traveling, and then we have the current. right? Now, basically, what we're looking for is um, the resultant vector. Like when they're asking, what is the actual speed of the boat, this is where last class period comes into play. Remember that tail to head method that we were talking about? Like that's basically what we're looking for. Like here is the current, just add the current to the boat. And what that gives us is this is what we're looking for. This is going to be your current plus the boat. That's what we want to figure out. Yes? And once we figure that out, can we find the magnitude of the current plus the boat? That is your speed, right? And then we got to figure out the angle. And again, for angle, we could, or the direction, which we could use bearings for. So. To find the magnitude of C plus B, basically all we're going to do is combine these components. So you're going to do 40 cosine of negative 90 degrees plus 10 cosine of 110 degrees. Right? You're adding the first two components. You're adding these two components together. Yes? No? And then you're taking the second two components, which is 40 times the sine of negative 90 degrees plus 10 times the sine of 110 degrees. 
Now, last class period, I did these individually. Last class period, I did these individually and then saved them into my calculator. But if you guys understand, like, when you add, remember when we did vector addition, it was on your notes. You just add the first two components and add the last and the, sec the secondary components. So let's go and figure this out. It's a lot to type in our calculator, but we can do it. 40 cosine of negative 90 plus 10 cosine of 110. And that's giving me a negative 3.42, which I'm going to store as alpha A. And then I do this one, which would be 40 times the sine of negative 90 plus the 10 times the sine of 100. Oh, it was 110. I don't know why I erased that. And that gives me a negative 30.60. And I'm going to store that as alpha b. No? So you just combine, you just both, you just combine both of them together to get a and b. Yeah, this is your component for a, and this is your component for b. Okay. Now, does my component kind of seem like to? Negative 43, what? No, 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 actually, this is my colors in front of you. 40 sine negative 10. Oh, I did 10 colors. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, I'm not seeing any different. I mean, I'll just run with this, and then we figure out an issue. Yeah. We'll, we'll go from there. Um, anyways, but guys, this is just the resultant vector. Now, first of all, does this vector make sense? Negative 3.42, negative 30.6. Like, should this vector be in the fourth quadrant? This is your A plus, I'm sorry, this, ooh, crap. This is your C plus B. Does this make sense? Is this, is this vector in your third quadrant? Yes, it works. Now, can we figure out the magnitude? Yes, all you're going to do is take the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now, before we even calculate that, should that be faster than 40 knots or slower than 40 knots? Should be slower, right? So if we get something faster or something crazy, we obviously know we did something wrong. So is this the one I saved? Yes. So should you use your, you shouldn't use the rounded answer. I would not use the rounded answer. I mean, it depends on how I ask you to round, right? I mean, but technically, you should never be using a rounded answer, right? So I'll use alpha A squared plus alpha B squared. And I'm getting 30.79 knots. And does that sound about right? Yeah. Right, and I didn't tell you how to round, so let's just, I'll just round to the nearest hundredth. But, I mean, does that make sense? You're traveling at 40 knots, but then you have wind flowing at 10, the other opposite direction. So 30.79 sounds about right, correct? Now let's go and figure out what the angle is. Can we figure out what this angle is? That angle. Well, let's just figure out the angle of the vector, right? So the angle of the vector is going to be tangent theta equals v2 over v1, right? So I'll just do tangent inverse of alpha b divided by alpha a. And I get 83 degrees. Actually, 84 degrees as I round it to the nearest hole. However, is that the angle of my vector? No. No. So if I'm going to say a bearing, if that means this is 84 degrees. So therefore, I could say a direction would be like 6, or I'm sorry, south 6 degrees west would be a bearing. That's telling me, talking about that? Yes? Yeah, that works. That works? Yeah. OK. So we'll just leave it at that, because I want to make sure I have enough time to get through it.